right, so we're going to talk about metallic bonding. So metallic bonding happens in every piece of metal that you pick up, because if you think about it, a piece of metal, so like your ring, for instance, will have several atoms in that. It's not just one atom. So every time that you have a piece of metal, there's metallic bonding. So <clears throat> when we look at the metallic bond, what we're going to see is we're gonna have atoms that are sharing all of their valence electrons. So there is essentially delocalized electrons being shared amongst all the atoms. Now technically, because the electrons are moving around, they're no longer necessarily attached to it. So technically, the atoms are ions. They are positively charged because the electrons are not necessarily attached to it anymore. So they are delocalized, and a lot of the properties that we have with metals are due to those delocalized electrons, okay? So when we look at removing electrons from metals, we know that it takes less energy to remove those electrons than with nonmetals. So it's still an endothermic process, it still requires some energy, but it requires a smaller amount when we compare that to nonmetals. Now, some of the things that we know about metals, we know that they're good conductors of heat and electricity. We know that they have high melting points, most of them do, which, you know, that suggests a very strong bond. We also know that they're malleable and ductile. Malleable means that it'll bend under pressure. Ductile means I can pull it into a wire. This is because when we have this structure right here, it actually has a layer. There are layers upon layers upon layers. Because we've got those layers, uh, they're able to be, you know, to slide over each other pretty easily. That's why they're, it's malleable and it's ductile. Now, we know that metals are going to be conductive. They're conductive as solids and also if we melt it down. So, and that's because the electrons are free to move. So if you apply a voltage to it, those electrons are going to move towards the positive electrode, however you end up applying that electricity. There is no chemical change when this happens. Okay, you're just simply moving the electrons around. Now, ionic compounds can also conduct electricity. So when we're looking at data and trying to decide if, an, uh, if a compound is ionic or covalent or if it's metallic, we will generally look at the conductivity first. So metals are always conductive no matter what. Ionic compounds can conduct electricity when it's melted or dissolved. Those ions need to be able to be moved around. Um, if, if an ionic compound um, is in a liquid state, so if I actually take liquid sodium chloride and I try to apply a voltage to it, well, what will end up happening is a chemical change. So you can actually move the electrons around. So if I have sodium chloride, I apply electricity to it, that's a sodium ion and a chloride ion, and I can actually go back and create solid sodium and chlorine gas. Now, for melting point, as we go down a group, so the S and the P block, okay, the atoms become larger. You have to remember that if you have, mole if you have molecules or particles that are larger, they can't get as close together, okay? So these, in the, these atoms, since they can't get as close to each other, the melting point will go down because they're not gonna be as attracted to each other. Um, now, that means that as we go down a group, we tend to see that the melting point and the boiling point uh, goes down, if it's a metal. <laughs> now, if you go across a period, you don't really have that clear of a trend, but what you can do is you can actually start to compare the charge of the ions and then the size. You should see that if you increase the charge and decrease the size, that because of that, it's Coulomb's law, the melting point and the boiling point should be higher because they're gonna be more attracted to each other. But it's not always about the size and the charge of the ion. Sometimes it also depends on just the arrangement of the atoms. Um, now, if we have an alloy, an alloy is a combination of metal with something else. It's usually another metal, but sometimes it can be things like carbon. So the other element will give characteristics to the other metal. 
and then we can make either we can make the melting point uh, lower we can also make it harder so when we put an added element into that structure into that metallic bond uh, it distorts the lattice and it actually makes it very hard for those layers to actually slide over each other